Morning everybody, I'm uh, just out here in the bunker working on putting some bear facts together, our IFACs that we sell. And it occurred to me that um, there's some specifics about how these should go together. So I wanted to show you um, how I pack a bear fact and how I pack a bear minimum kit because I know you guys are gonna get these, get your grubby little paws all over them and be like, how do I put it back together again? So I wanted to show you that the, uh, yeah, the order that I'm putting these together and I'm putting these together by hand. By the way, here's the prototype and then uh, this is the bear fact and then brother Cody, this is the actual product and we did this big wide hook and loop panel here for all your cool patches and everything and their color match. So gray on gray, black on black, green on green and tan on tan and then your molly in the back that ties on so that you don't have to worry about your snaps coming undone. Uh, bigger buckle, we went with a one inch buckle instead of a three quarter inch buckle. So bigger buckle so you can get your paws on there, no problem. And then your drag handles right on top, pull that out and your kit comes out. So I'll show you uh, how we do this. And if there's some of y'all salivating like, bro, how do I get one of those and do the tactical things with knife hands? You go to bearindependent.com. Um, B E A R independent.com. Just click the shop tab up top and that'll, that'll take you to all the things, including the bear fact. And, um, I don't have a bear minimum with me yet, but let's go ahead. And I'm going to show you how to do, how to pack a bear fact. This is an operational gray. So, uh, yeah, I want to show you this. This is all the stuff. This is a full gallon bag of stuff that goes in there that we're going to condense down into this cool right and the kit that we're going to be doing is a coyote tan see look at that oh, i love it color match uh, hook and loop and this one is for david b in lexington feel special brother you are okay so first on the background we got our molly field here so these straps you're gonna weave through your molly or if you're gonna run this on a belt just you know appropriately position all of this. And then you have this uh, high speed cordage here. This goes through here, through here, through here, through here, and then tie. So you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. Okay, see, so you're coming through here, around here, through here, around here, and through here. And then you're gonna cinch that up nice and tight on your, on whatever kind of platform you're running this on you know, uh, your chest rig or your um, plate carrier or your rucksack or whatever. And I like the bigger kits. I like these bare facts on rucks. They're a little uh, big for operating operationally like an operator, but this makes a good butt, a butt pack kit on like a war belt or something. But um, I definitely like it on rucks. I like the bare minimum kit on my plate carrier and my uh, chest rig. So, and as you can see here, you're just gonna back this up with a half hitch like that, tie it on good and tight. And then you don't have to worry about these pulling out while you're operating operationally like an operator. Okay, so that's how these molly on, because you're probably like, WTH bro, how do I do this? That's how you do that. And yeah, there's the, bare fact and just so you don't think I'm kidding here's my plate carrier with a bare minimum kit on it right there so yep not kidding I like the bare bare minimum on my line gear all right so then uh, you're gonna undo your uh, fast tech buckle and then there's a little do bobble inside of here you're gonna squeeze that pull that open and open that up and then our outer pouch is good to go Okay, so we're gonna set this aside right about there-ish. Thank you, uh, what was your name? David B. Thank you, David B. for letting us abuse your stuff. So I'm gonna take your packing slip and I'm gonna put it over here. And then each one of these kits comes with a checklist of all the things that we're gonna put in it. it. Says, congratulations, you bought a bear fact. You're probably a decent human being-ish. Gen 7 tourniquet, uh, shears, decomp needle, trauma dressing, compressed gauze, 4x4s, rolled gauze, duct tape, nitrile gloves, quick clot, chest seals, 
NPA 5x9 uh, nasal pharyngeal airway, two 5x9s, emergency blanket, two 2x2s, two triangle bandage, medical tape, and disinfectant wipes, packed by Bear. And so I use these when I'm putting all the stuff in the bag. I go through and pick all the stuff out and put it in the bag. And then as I take it out of this bag and put it in the kit, I will check off each one of these as we go. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get our chest seals, our two five by nines and our airway, brand new airway. And these go like this, chest seals, airway, five by nine, like so. Pull the Velcro tab here, the keeper tab, and slide these suckers in right over here. Get it all nice and orderly, you know. You don't have to get like, don't get all posse comitatus on it. You don't have to yell at it. You don't have to get violent with it. Just, you know, put it over there. Okay, so the next, we're gonna take our Gen 7 cat tourniquet. Yeah, it's Gen 7, see? It's got the gray on it. And uh, brand new, brand new tourniquet. North American Rescue, legit TQ, see? Brand new. <laughs> and a rooster, Gen 7. The rooster approves this message. The tourniquet goes in like so, okay? With the um, buckly part over here. The words are not tremendous this morning. Next, we have our nasal, or not nasal, sorry, decompression needle, legit decompression needle, 14 gauge times 3.25, three and a quarter inch needle decompression kit, okay? And this has the flapper valve on top of it. This is a legit decompression needle. Um, one of the only kits on the market that actually includes it. You can make the argument that if you don't know how to use it, you shouldn't have it. You should certainly get training with it because on your right side, there's just a lung. On the leftish side, there's a lung and a heart. I really don't want you poking a hole in your own heart or somebody else's, but uh, get training. It's definitely worth having one though, and we are the few, one of the few kits on the market that you can get it with. Dark Angel Medical does not include one. Skinny Medic doesn't include one. Uh, My Medic does not include one. Um, we do, and so it's an integral part of this kit, and this is in both the bare fact and the bare minimum. Okay, next is shears. These are legit. Um, North American Rescue shears, they have the rubberized on the inside, so they feel good on your hands while you're operating operationally. And these suckers go right in there like that. And then we are gonna open up this, pull this out, and we have some gloves. This is a pair of nitrile gloves, size large. And they go underneath the shears right there. Shut up, chicken, nobody likes you. You're just kind of an a-hole. All right, so we're gonna pause there a moment, and then over here we have our two by twos, quantity two, and we've got uh, four by fours, quantity two, and then this is a five by nine, two, in addition to our two five by nine combine pads that are here. And then this stuff goes on the Slide over hand, right there. That goes there on the bottom of the right side. Then you're gonna take your trauma dressing. This is a uh, North American Rescue ETD, emergency trauma dressing, six inch. These are totally BA, they are legit. This is basically their version of an Israeli combat dressing, okay? And it's a six inch, not a four inch. Everybody knows that six inch is better than four inch, regardless of what your girlfriend might have told you, this is the one you want, okay? It's not just the motion of the eye fact that matters. Uh, but you know, you do you, it's okay. You go cry into your Zima, it'll be all right. Triangle uh, dressing, then this is gonna go down here in the corner, like so. We're gonna give that a nice pat because we're proud of it and it did a good job today. Um, then we are going to take our compressed gauze, and AR gauze, and our uh, survival blanket. And why, why? For packing wounds, right? 
and uh, for treating uh, shock slash hypothermia, okay? And so these are gonna go over here on top of the shears and the tourniquet, the TQ, just like so. Here's another one. I don't know why they vacuum seal all these vacuum seal things with like 40, seven, eight, nine percent more material than it needs, but they do. And it's really frustrating because if you try and snip these to take up less space, then it will lose its vacuum seal and no longer be compressed gauze. It'll just be gauze. So fold that up as tight as you can get it and put that in here over the top of the shears like so. And that brings us to our disinfectant wipes and it says four on the sheet but we actually have six here uh, which is 50 percent better than four for everybody playing along in the home game we're going to tuck those right there our medical tape is going to go on top of those as you can see we're going to take our clotting sponge u.s military proven safe and easy to use stops bleeding fast one sterile mesh sponge I'm gonna fold that like so. Okay, because again, yay, packaging. Very American consumerism of us. And slide that on top of the trauma dressing over here. And then we have a little roll of duct tape, two inch by 26 inches. Why do we have this? Uh, well, we have chest seals, but um, if we needed to improvise a chest seal, we could with the packaging of the chest seal itself, with the packaging of the trauma dressing, with the packaging of the compressed gauze, any of that. And duct tape sticks to bloody bodies better than medical tape does. So here's a little roll of duct tape. Uh, it's there if you need it, plus also duct tape. And then we've got a roll of Curlex here. This is a three inch by four yard roll gauze, AKA Curlex or Kling or whatever freaking name you like. And I've generally stuck that right here in the top then you're going to take your two tabbies down in here and that's a technical term we've actually trademarked that these are tabbies one goes there and the other fish around down here pull it out and put it there and now your kit is packed and um, then what you're going to do is fold it in half lube it with some nice olive oil salt and pepper or a little bit of rendered butter or ghee and use that or even 5w20 whatever you need and then we're going to slide this into here now it's important that you take this out at some point and bake it at 425 or 18 to 20 minutes until it's golden brown um especially in a tactical situation golden brown but not overdone okay so stand by we're going to put this into here all right, I've got it started as you can see here. We'll turn it this way because camera angles and things. Oh, what's this? This is a prototype. Yeah, check that out. That sucks, it's only got Gen 3s on it. Well, I used all the Gen 7s for y'all, so you're welcome, question mark. Yeah, that's a prototype. Um, little razor knife hiding there. We'll come to that eventually. Um, so yeah. So you get this thing started like so, and understand like, this is kind of like fitting, you know, a 10 pound ham into a five pound ham sack or whatever that analogy is. So you're gonna squeeze and slide like so, and then push like so, right? And then you're gonna get this down in there. There we go, like that. Now, again, the idea behind this kit is, and check out the awesome tags Brother Cody got. Sojourn gear oh there we go sojourn gear uh so if um you want something else that's cool and made of ballistic nylon i know a guy it's cody at sojourn gear s-e-w-j-o-u-r-n gear.com and if you're like that's a cool kit can i buy that kit yeah, you can. You can go see our brother, the NWA Prepper, at AdventureFrontier.com and buy these kits from him. Buy anything else you want to buy from him. You can get just the guts or just the empty bags from there as well. So if you have stuff you want to put in here, you just want the bags, you can get that as well. So you slide that in there, and the idea is if something bad happens, we'll just, here, I'm not going to pull the drawstring yet. But if something bad happens, this is mollied onto your person. You click the buckle, 
you grab the handle, right? I got nothing to grab onto. This would be mollied onto your, your person. And then you pull, this comes out, and now you can get it out where you need it, okay? That's the concept behind this. Okay, so I got this back in here. Now what you're gonna wanna do is pop this, the best production work ever. Pop this little handle up, go inside of here, pull this drawstring, shazam, and I put the drawstring inside, the handle outside, fold this up like an old flower sack or something, pull this over the top, buckle, pull, secured, okay? Um, and the, the whole idea behind this is the rapid deployment system, RDS, or whatever we were calling it, I don't remember. But I, it doesn't matter what we call it. I want you to be able to pop this buckle, grab this thing, and get your kit out where you need it ASAP. That's the idea behind it, is ASAP. And I think that this does this better than the GI issue IFAX and it has way more capability than the GI issue IFAX. And again, this is the bare, uh, bare fact. This is the big one. The bare minimum is significantly smaller than this. Uh, in fact, hold on, I'll get one, stand by. Watcha. This one is actually being shipped to our brother uh, who shall remain nameless because he's a Leo in Hillsborough, California. Bless you, brother. Thank you for everything that you do. So here you can see the size difference between the two. The bare minimum is significantly smaller. Um, I got to do the tabby things on this one, but significantly smaller, but it has still a mountain of capability. What we have in the bare minimum is a cat uh, tourniquet gen seven shears, decompression needle, trauma dressing, medical tape, nitro gloves, chest seals, nasal pharyngeal airway, and two five by nine combine pads. It's the bare minimum. If you get hit by a round or you get lacerated or you have uh, tension pneumothorax or something like that, that's what this kit is designed to do. And this is very much so a kit for your line one on your battle belt or your war belt or your line two on your chest rig or your plate carrier. Um, it's probably good for corrections officers if you do a lot of standing. I would not want to sit with this kit, truth be told. You'd probably be better served with a pocket kit. But to have it on your person, when, if and when you have to present a weapon, being able to, if you're going to make holes or potentially make holes, being able to plug holes, um, it's a good thing. You have precisely the number of holes in your body that you're supposed to have right now. There's a fun fact for you. So... And as you can see, we completed our checklist of all the things that go in there. And I usually put a little love note on there. Uh, just a, a word of encouragement and some thanks for uh, supporting what we do. And so now I'm going to package this one up because it's got to go out uh, to the peoples. And oh, and if you're like, how do I get cool bear stickers like these? You get uh, right now, you get two of them for every order that you do. And yeah, I'll put all the links down in the description. So... Check those out. That's right. Good job. But yeah, now we're gonna do a bare minimum. All right, so now we're gonna do a bare minimum kit real quick. Now these are clamshells. So again, uh, you're gonna do the same thing on the back with the loopy thing so that it looks like that. You come from here, through here, through here, through here, tie with an overhand knot, okay? So you're gonna do the same thing here on the back. You're gonna pull this open, flip it out like that. Okay, and this has the elastic at the top. Pouch is ready to go. This is the outer pouch. This is the inner pouch. It has this uh, drawstring on it like so. So what I like to do is I flip this over like that. Mm-hmm, here, let's do this. Can we? Yeah, best camera work ever. Okay, and then in this kit, we're gonna get a Gen 7 cat tourniquet, shears, decompression needle, trauma dressing, medical tape, nitro gloves, chest seals, nasal pharyngeal airway, and two five by nines. So, the first thing that goes into this kit is we get our stack, which is our high fin full size, not the compact, the full size. Although if you want compact, let me know, we can accommodate you. Airway and two five by nines, okay? Um, five by nines for packing a wound, uh, for dressing a wound. You can cut this up, pack a wound with it. 
uh, obviously for covering a wound or for blood absorption before you apply something like a chest seal or whatever you got to do. Okay, so all of this, you open up your little man purse here, you slide that right down in like so. Okay, next thing, your shears, same shears, nasal or uh, <laughs> NAR, North American Rescue. See, they get the little rubber impregnated inside there. And um, bonus points to anybody out there in the comments that knows why the shears have a hole in them like that. In fact, the first one of you to tell me in the comments, the first comment as to why there's a hole right there, uh, I'm gonna, you put your email address and I'm gonna send you something special. Okay, so your shears go in, then your cat tourniquet, <gasps> stand by, see? This is why we do the checklist, because there was no trauma dressing in the bag. So you get your trauma dressing, okay? Sorry there, uh, Iron Man, I almost shorted you. This kit's for Iron Man. So this goes down here in the front like so. I know you guys can't really see, there you go. Okay, so it goes like that, and you see there's a little pocket right here. Take your gloves and squish, like so and stuff them down in that little pocket, okay? Pokey pokey. Take your cat, this side down, away from the handle, like so. Legit decompression needle, like so. And then your tape goes up here at the top end where your cat is, just like that. Pull your drawstring, slide that down, and I tuck that inside of there. Okay, and then so there's that. Then we're gonna put this inside of there. Stand by. All right, so you're gonna get this thing, you can get this thing and see how this corner's pointy. Put that corner in first. Kinda, no, you guys can't see. The best production quality. Kinda hold it like that. Stretch that around like so. We can do it. There we go. Just slide that bad mamma jamma down in there. Just like that. Now, what's probably gonna happen, we'll cross this bridge when we get there. But this little dew bobble likes to hang up on this. Just slide that underneath there, like that. Whoa! Ha! The best production. Push it like that. And you're gonna have a little bit of the gray inner pouch sticking above this. That's okay. I fold this down, flip this over, line up your Velcro, and turn it down. There's your bare minimum kit, ready to go. And uh, nice, compact package, tight, weighs nothing. And yet another love note written. And then we got all our things. Gen 7 cat tourniquet, shears, decompression needle, trauma dressing, medical tape, nitro gloves, chest seals, nasal pharyngeal airway, five by nine gauze. Done. That's how you put an eye fact together. That's the bare fact and the bare minimum. All right, that's it. That's it. That's how you do the things. Thank you for uh, being here. Uh, I hope if you don't have one of these, you've got some ideas for your kit, what you want to put in your kit. You don't have to buy my kit. There's lots of good kits out there. Um, just buy a good kit, learn how to use it. If you do want to buy my kit, go to bearindependent.com, go to adventurefrontier.com, uh, go to Sojourn Gear, Sojourn gear.com and uh the kits aren't there but cody will make you anything you want within reason don't get weird but within reason he'll make it for you and it's phenomenal work so go check out sojourngear.com adventurefrontier.com tell them bear sent you uh, you can go to bearindependent.com and uh, just do all the things um, thank you to everybody who participated in the sustain slash improve Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for supporting what we do here. Really appreciate it. Um, couldn't be happier that my life looks the way that it does. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, you know, get an IFAC, know how to use it, individual first aid kit. You know, have some medical on you. It's one of the most lacking things that I see in people's kits is, you know, I'm gonna survive the end of the world. Probably not. No, you, you've got like four band-aids and a triangle dressing. Probably not. So, yeah. 
the bare minimum right there see there's one on my plate carrier not kidding it's what i run so uh and remember smile you're on camera bless y'all later